Hello everyone, it's Stella. And Taryn here from Maple University. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Bad Baby Lich Lords, a game designed by Ross Cowman, Taylor Dow and Pat Kemp, and published by Heart of the Dinacorn. Let's get to the game! In Bad Baby Lich Lords, the Lich King is tired and has converted all of the minions of the realms into skeletons, piling them in the bone pile just to get some peace and quiet and rest. With their father asleep, the baby Lich Lords are now setting about waking up the skeletons, making best use of their abilities and trying to win the realms and make noise to wake up their father. The first player to win a total 5 noise points worth of realms will win the game. To set up for the standard 2 player game, choose 3 of the realms that you'll play with. And in your first game you should leave the pink realm in the box. This has some more advanced mechanisms which we'll describe at the end of the video. Shuffle and place the matching coloured decks into the holders. The large cards are called the realm cards. You'll place these face up so that there'll always be one realm available which the players will be fighting for. The smaller cards have a coloured image on one side which is called a minion and an uncoloured bone image which is called the skeleton. Throughout the game this card will either represent a skeleton or a minion depending on which side is up. In setup, you'll shuffle all of these cards and then place them skeleton side up into a pile which is known as the bone pile for this realm. Each realm has a separate realm deck and bone pile. Now lay the three realms in a row between the players, shuffle the spell cards and place them to the left of the row and choose a first player. You're now ready to play. Bad Baby Lich Lords is played in turns, starting from the first player and going back and forward until one player has won 5 noise points worth of realm cards. The first player to do this wins the game. On your turn you will take one Lich action, and if you have any spells in your hand you may also optionally play any number of spell cards either before or after your Lich action but not during. There are two different ways you can take your Lich action. The first option is to choose the top skeleton from any one of the three bone piles and then place it onto your side of any one of the three realms. You must then raise that skeleton into a minion and resolve all of its skills from left to right. Your second option is to choose a skeleton who is already on your side of the board and then raise it in place, flipping it over to become a minion and once again resolving all of its skills from left to right. These are the only two options, taking a new skeleton and raising it or taking an existing skeleton and raising it. You cannot reactivate a card which is already on its minion side as your lich action. I'll explain what all of these different icons do shortly, but first I'll explain what you're trying to achieve, which is controlling and scoring these realms. At the end of each turn you'll check to see whether any of the realms score, and if any player meets the requirements at the bottom of that realm card, that player takes the card. If both players meet it, then whosever turn it currently is takes the card. There are a few different types. For this card, for example, you would need to have at least two minions, at least one of which had a sword icon, and at least one of which had a leave icon. The same card cannot count for both, so right now neither of these players meets the objective. The objective must be met by minions, not skeletons, so if this card were here as a skeleton, this player would still not meet the objective. But with this card flipped to be a minion, this player now wins the realm. This card here requires at least two minion cards, but no minion cards that have the raise icon. So neither player presently meets the objective. This one has one minion and a skeleton, this one has two minions but a raise icon. Once again, only icons on minions count. So if the cards were set up like this, then this player would score the realm. Two minions and no raise icons on minions. This card here requires at least two minions and those minions must have at least one matching skill, as indicated by the wild star. 
As such, the bottom player meets this objective. Finally, a card like this one shows a number of the skill icons in circles rather than on card icons. This requires that player to have all of those icons on minions, but there can be multiple icons per card. This set, for example, would be enough for the bottom player to claim the realm. Any time a realm is scored, the player who wins it takes the top card from this deck to count their points, and then all minion and skeleton cards currently in that realm are discarded to the burn pile. They are out of the game for good. So now we'll look at raising minions and resolving skills. Most important to note is that when raising or resolving a minion, resolving all of its skills from left to right is mandatory. You may only skip a skill if it's impossible to complete. Some skills will affect your side of the board, some will affect the opponent's side, and some could affect either. Since all effects are mandatory, you may even need to do something negative to your own game as the result of having to resolve the icons. There are also some minions which give you the choice between two different skills rather than having to resolve them all from left to right. In this case, if only one of the two skills is possible, then you can choose the impossible one to avoid doing the possible one. The first action is dig. When you dig, you must take the top skeleton from the bone pile of that minion's realm, and then place it onto either player's side of that same realm. The sword icon represents fighting, and this allows you to flip minions back to the skeleton side. For each fighting icon, you must choose a minion in the same realm that has fewer fighting icons, and then flip it over. Here, the only option for this gate creeper's fight action would be to flip worms back over to the skeleton side. When you use a minion that has two fight icons, then you'll resolve each of those icons. In this case, the only two face-up minions in the realm are these two. They both have fewer than two fight icons, and so this card would necessarily flip both of these back down to the skeleton side. The scroll is the teach skill, and with this you'll draw one spell card into your hand. There's no limit to the number you can hold. The arrows are the leave effect, and you must move that minion to an adjacent realm. The lightning bolt represents the raise action, and with this choose any one skeleton in that minion's realm, whether it be your side or the opponent's, and raise it, flipping it over to the minion side. You now resolve all of that minion's skills as if you had raised it as your lich action. So here, this player would gain a spell and move this minion according to their own choice. The pointing finger represents the boss skill, and with this you choose an already flipped up minion in this realm, and then resolve all of its skills, again as if you'd raised it as your lich action. The heart is the friendship skill, and when resolving this you must choose a face up minion from any other realm, and move it to that minion's realm without changing its side of the board. Then finally for this starter set, represented by the four-pointed star, is Cast. Here you'll draw one card from the spell deck without adding it to your hand, and then you'll play it immediately. All of the spell cards show one of these same icons on the back side. And when you play one, either as part of a cast action or by choice on your turn, you'll resolve the effect usually being able to choose your target from any realm. Additionally, if you have two matching spell cards in your hand and you play them together, you can resolve the more powerful bottom effect, known as the Forbidden Combo. Note as well that Learn Spells count as wild for others' Forbidden Combos. Finally, as a golden rule, you're not allowed to do any combination which would result in activating a card more than once per turn. For example, if I use this raise spell to activate this card and resolve its effect, and then I brought this card from the boneyard and raised it, I couldn't use its boss action to activate this again. The game ends immediately when any one player has scored five or more noise points, and the player who does that is the winner. 
Once you've played the game a few times, you can introduce the Pink Realm, which adds a few new effects, particularly affecting skeletons. There is one new skill, which is the Possess skill, and when doing this, you choose any skeleton in that realm, which can include the one on top of the bone pile, and then resolve all of its icons as if it had just been raised as a minion. This could have a few unexpected effects. This one, for example, is going to dig itself, because it is the card on the bone pile in its own realm. It may end up leaving, which could even make it move from bone pile to bone pile. And note that the Raise skill specifically targets other cards, so a Possessed Skeleton could not raise itself. The rule still holds that a card can only be activated once per turn, whether that be as a Skeleton or Minion. The Pink Realm also introduces Skeletons into some of the objectives. Here, for example, you'd need at least two Skeleton cards. In this case, you would need at least three Skeleton cards and no Minions. In this case, you can see this is skeletons with two matching icons. The card icon here is black rather than white. This one here requires at least one minion, at least one skeleton, and no dig icons on minion cards only. And for a full explanation of any others, check the rulebook. To play Bad Baby Lich Lords with three players, you'll use three realms and set them up in a triangle like so. Each player will be contesting only two realms rather than all three, and will have a different opponent in each realm. For the definitions of all of the skills, you treat your side of the two realms you're contesting as your side of the board, and then all four of the other sides as being opponent sides. You can also play with four players in a two versus two team mode. You'll use all four realms and you'll sit next to your teammate, so that your side of the board will represent half of two of the realms, and your teammate's side will represent the other half. You'll still take turns in a clockwise order, and the first player must be the second of one of the two teams. When you take your Lich action and other actions, you're still restricted to only your side of the board, meaning your side of the two realms that you control. But anything which allows movement will still let you move cards between your side and your teammate's side. The first team to reach a combined 5 points is the winner. And that's how to play Bad Baby Lich Lords. We hope that you enjoyed the video. We are using a prototype copy of the game, and so the rules and components may not be final. And do check out the project page for the game, we'll put a link to that in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Everything you do will help us. Every single view, every time you like our video, our Instagram, every single comment, and let us know that you are there. And make sure you're doing something fun today. See you next time.